Thank you, welcome. Thank you very much. I feel very excited. An enthusiastic welcome for a man who has traveled from half a world away bearing gifts. With this program, you can do... Next on African Voices, Seth Uhusu, intent on connecting every school in Africa with the World Wide Web, one refurbished computer at a time. Today you are receiving 10 computers. Can I get everybody's commitment as students? Are you going to learn seriously with these computers? Okay, good, good. It's a powerful thing that Seth Owusu does, helping out the kids from his homeland, making sure they're not left behind by reconditioning old computers from the developed world and sending them to those schools in need in the developing world, Seth gives children the tools to compete globally. EFCO stands for Entire Village Computers, trumpeting Seth's belief that a whole community benefits when computers are introduced into the local schools. It feels great to be able to finally get the computers to the children. It takes a lot to get it done from the time I pick it up from my shop to here in Ghana and to the classroom. But it feels great to see the whole community rally around the entire process. It's, it's a great feeling to be here today. Growing up under difficult conditions in rural Ghana, Seth Uwusu identifies strongly with the children he helps. Education in, in Ghana growing up was, uh, was a mixed bag because my, my father was a school teacher. So, uh, Bomi being my hometown, we still move to different uh, places in the country. And for some reason, my father used to, uh, chose to go to the most rural part of the country. And uh, me being the first boy of a family of seven, um, I had no choice. I went with him everywhere he went. So um, by the time I turned 13, I had, we had moved to different villages. And you saw things from uh, horrible to, to things that you, you imagine. And um, in classrooms where the schools are, uh, the walls are halfway and the teacher will be teaching and the chicken will run into the class and uh, uh, kinds of uh, things that you, you, you feel like uh, you want to get away from. But um, my, my father was glad to be helping the community as a teacher. So um, he moved and I went with him. So we, we moved to various uh, villages and various schools. Uh, I recall a, a, a point in, in the school period where some missionaries came to the school. And they came in and they gave us pieces of paper and they wanted us to make a Christmas card. And at first, I didn't think you could make a Christmas card. I thought it was something you have to go to the store and buy. So they, um, we shaped the, the paper and then, you know, colored it and cut it. And all of a sudden, you spread it up and it looks beautiful. And these missionaries, um, when I spoke to my teacher, he said, oh, they came all the way from Accra to come here. And that part of the country was uh, called the Brown Huffle region. Um, very far away from Accra. And especially you look at the roads and everything, it's, it's not the most uh, smoothest travel for somebody to do. So when, when I went home that day, I talked to my parents and I said, you know what, I think when I grow up, I want to be a missionary. They said, well, how do you become a missionary? And so I was telling them about the story of what happened at school. And so that particular experience um, etched in my mind and I, the, the entire class felt very good that day where we felt like somebody wanted to donate their time and their experience to uh, some kids they've never met and probably would never see in, in their lives when they, when they live there. So it, it, it really opened my eyes and, and it showed me that regardless of how little you have, you can do something for somebody which can be great for their life and for their future. 
Owusu knew early that he wanted to make a difference, but it was only upon reaching the United States that he could see the possibilities. That goal from, from that very day in the classroom was, was at the back of my mind, was something that I wanted to do. But when I migrated to America, that really shaped the thinking because um, from, from sixth form in Ghana, when I was doing what we call the national service uh, teaching, I, I taught for about a year and a half. I, although I wanted to do something, I didn't have the means to do something. And also, because I didn't have the means, I, I wasn't focused on what I wanted to do other than volunteering for uh, communal labor or do something in the, in the local school. Uh, but when I got here, the idea of anybody can do anything in America spirit, you know, it kind of uh, opened my eyes, kind of told me that, hey, there's a lot of things out there that I could do. So the idea started flowing. Uh, first, I thought about, oh, okay, maybe I can work hard and get some money and buy some soccer balls and, and uh, spiral notebooks and crayons and stuff like that and go donate to the school. So the uh, American experience, if you will, shaped the thinking. Exposure to something far less familiar than stationery was about to change Seth's path. He had little idea of the impact of this new technology. I didn't know what a computer was. Arriving in the States in 1991, 23-year-old Ghanaian Seth Wusu had never seen a computer before. My first experience with a computer, I was working in a warehouse. And um, the warehouse, we use something called RDT. It's, it's like a handheld computer, like a big calculator. And this was a home improve, improvement warehouse. So you will go and pick up things and put it in a cart for it to be shipped to the various stores. And so uh, one day, I think I was training when I first got there the first week. So they called me at the office and they said, hey, uh, you've been doing good. You pick a lot of uh, doors and, and, and tiles and, and the lady was looking everything in the computer. At this time you did this and that time you did that. And I, was, I was amazed. I said, oh, okay. So when I left there and there was a guy who was training me and he said well when you start to go on your own you got to be working very hard because what they do is they can know when you're slacking when you're working and all your history up to like since you've been here so I look at the the, the concept and the and the computer and what it's doing and I realized that well if you put this in a classroom in let's say my village where we don't have books and, and we don't have a library. Um, if this can remember you know, all these things, that means you can use it in a, in a capacity to, to help a lot, to, to bridge the divide between the people who have books and the people who don't and, and things like that. So that experience was, it, it kind of pointed me towards where I wanted to go. First, Wusu learned all he could about this unfamiliar technology. Then he started his company, Entire Village Computers, or EFCO, from his home in Washington, D.C. Yes, from, from there, uh, I, I guess that was the beginning of, of, of this, that was the seed. So uh, I started thinking about what shape or what form do I want this path to, to, you know, to go. That set me on the path to find more about the computers, which led me into going to a computer school to learn about hardware and software and networking. During the, the course, I went and bought three computers to network so I can uh, simulate what we're doing in school at home. So when I finished the school, I realized, oh, I have three computers. So I can, um, I, I didn't think three computers were good enough number so I wanted to purchase a couple more so I contacted my high school in Ghana 
and I guess charity begins at home. <laughs> so, so I contacted them and I said, um, I want to come in and donate computers to the school. They, they thought I was crazy. And so um, I had a representative in Ghana who uh, led that effort. So the idea, uh, after I finished school and had these computers, that, that was a starting point. Okay, now I have three. So if I get three more, I can make a lab for a, for a big school. So that, that's how that started. IFCO is a charitable organization funded entirely by Seth Wusu, his family and a small pool of committed donors. One being his employer, consumer electronics retailer Best Buy and its computer support subsidiary Geek Squad. Used computers are reconditioned by Seth and shipped to Africa. The whole uh, concept about our donation process is um, first not just the computers, but getting the entire community involved in the, in the process. So starting from here in the States, I, uh, by then I started working with Best Buy. So I uh, contacted them and that was I think a couple of years after I did the first donation. So that's the main source that I get my computer, Best Buy and Geek Squad. And so I get the computers, I bring them home, I check them and um, make sure that first they're working and second I can upgrade it so it can have the best effect and also the longevity of course. This is the garage also called the drop point that when I bring in computers I take them out of the truck or the car and I put them over here. This is where they first get tested. I connect them to my monitor and then um, see if they work or if I need to, uh, if it's going to be an easy fix. If it's an easy fix, I just set it right here and then use my software and then start working on them. And then after they're finished, I put them over here, getting them ready to be shipped. We all getting to know about computers. It's not only about the hardware. FCO runs training workshops, provides technical support and maintains an ongoing relationship with the recipients of their computers. All of this is done by Seth and his small team in Ghana. I have a team of four in Ghana. So we sit down and we go through the applications. We look for um, a village that can have a larger impact on you know, the case because we want uh, for the place that has no computers and the kids have basically not a whole lot to do in the school. So we try to put the computers there as a electronic tool, also as a library, also as a place that not just that particular school, but the villages around that school can come in and, and, and benefit from the computer. So once we do that, once we pick the, uh, the school or the community that's gonna, uh, that qualifies for the computers, then we contact the local officials, the headmaster, the chief, um, the community leaders. And so we make this arrangement, uh, something we call donation ceremony. The idea is to get the whole community involved in the process because when, when I was in school, uh, your parents have a, a huge impact on you, how you, how you study and how uh, your attendance and everything is. So, by the donation process, inviting all the community into the program, that make them part of the process. So they know the kids are learning, so they can, uh, they feel proud to have them go to school rather than telling them to go to the farm. Uh, one, two, three, four. The kids get very excited about, about computers. They, uh, I remember one time <laughs> when, I think the second donation, um, we were in the classroom and we had this, uh, I believe it was a 19 inch monitor. And uh, one kid were, was asking the other one, you sure there's nobody hiding in this box? <laughs> because they, saw, <laughs> they see things going back and forth. And um, the kids learn very quickly. They learn, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's just, it surprises me. Because um, our program, when we do the donation, uh, we enter into a three calendar year agreement with the kids. 
with, with the school to go back and fix it and make sure everything is working this the next three years. And you go there, you do the first donation. And when you uh, have this uh, workshop that we do, the kids uh, in the first time, they scared to touch the keyboard and the mouse. So you see a kid sit there like this and just, and just look at the screen. And if you ask them to touch something on the keyboard, it's like very, very ginger, like they're going to break something. But you go there the next year when we do a follow-up visit, and they want to they wanna grab me and show me what they can do with the computer. You know, so it goes from um, a very, very timid atmosphere, like, no, nah, I don't want to do this, or do I have to, what's going to happen if I touch it, or is something going to get to me to a point where, hey, I'm the master, I can show you around, what do you want to know? You know, so it is, it, that, that experience is, is very, it's, up, it's uplifting. It makes you feel like, wow, why, I, I, how come I didn't do this sooner or earlier, maybe 10 years ago, you know, so it's, it's that experience is, is, is unbelievable. And, and also, them, uh, <laughs> their, their imagination, the idea of them looking and, and bringing things up that you, you, you never thought about. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a great experience to be in a classroom with them, especially during the workshop. What's some of the things that you can use a computer for? Uh, let's see. You. It's a long way from Washington, D.C. to rural Ghana, but for the Ghanaian-American techno whiz Seth Owusu, his two worlds are inextricably linked. Owusu created a company, EFCO, so he could pass on the skills he learned in his new home to those in his less fortunate homeland. I work for Best Buy and Geek Squad, so I, I go to work and uh, we fix computers. So. We deal with customers, um, remove viruses, do various um, networking, troubleshooting uh, activities in the, in, the, in the store. So I get up early in the morning so I can uh, answer my calls in Ghana and also contact people if I need to do that. And then after that, I walk to work and then I get to work in computers again. So it's, uh, in a sense, it's, it's in line with what I do with, with uh, EFCO because the, I gained a lot of experience from, from Geek Squad too, because we um, on the cutting edge, when technology comes out, we're the first to know and the first to, to, to use those things. So it transfers to, to my, the activity that I do at home uh, with, with EFCO. I didn't know how the letter works, so I know- The goal um, is to, to be able to do this project as a full-time project. And like right now, I, I work over two jobs because I have to do things. I have a full-time job, I have this, and I have other things that I do. Um, when I really look at things, although people see what we're doing now and they go, oh, this is great, you've done all this, and, and people are calling from all over Africa, and, and uh, it's great, but when I look at the potential, when I look at what we could do, what effect we can have on uh, kids, on, on education, um, we haven't even scratched the surface. Encyclopedia, right there. So if we go out and we talk to kids, and we talk to thousands of kids from various schools, um, even if you get one or two people to come out and then follow the trend, like I did when I was, uh, I had that experience with the, with the missionaries. That is uh, growth that we wouldn't have had if we didn't start this project. So my, my goal is, is to be able to do this full time. Talking is not enough for Wusu. He's driven by his desire to do more, to dream big and to follow through. Because most of us, we talk, we like to talk. I have friends uh, from Africa, all over the, uh, in, the, in the US where I live at. And you know, people can sit down and tell you everything that's wrong with Africa. 
they will tell you about poor governance and, and bribery and they, they will talk for days to no end. But when you ask them, what do you think could be the solution or what can you do to maybe help the situation, the, the conversation goes silent because they don't think about themselves as part of the solution. But of course, when you're not part of the solution, you could be part of the problem. You know, and oh, it's the government. The government do, uh, should do this and should do that, and they go down the list. But the little kids today in the rural communities where, you know, politicians only go there when they want people to vote for them, and that's the end of the story, um, they can't wait for, for, for the government to, to, to come to the, the, the village and, you know, do, do something that's as basic as putting a classroom there. You know, when I was in Nigeria and we we're talking to the, to the chief and he said, well, uh, the government needs to do this and every sentence starts with the government and the government and the government. And uh, <laughs> later I said, okay, uh, well, we've talked about the government part. How about the people? You know, that's what people forget sometimes. When I started the, this program, people said, Seth, you got to be out of your mind. You can't do this. You need to wait till you can write to Bill Gates and, and, and Steve Jobs and Oprah Winfrey and, and, and uh, for them to, to, to give you that support and guidance. But uh, you can also dream that one day you win the lottery. That's, that's good. <laughs> but uh, the chances of that happening may be, you know, maybe you would die before somebody even in your family think about winning the lottery. One, two, three. Money boys. Yes, Jesus. Everybody have dreams. We, we wake up with dreams. We look at things and uh, deep down inside we want to make a difference. But the first step is always the issue. And first you got to tell yourself that a thousand mile journey starts with a step. And the step doesn't have to be something huge that, you know, you have to call the press for. Internet is a complex worldwide interconnected network of computers. That's, that's amazing. Oh my goodness. So if we want to change the world, we have to start by changing the people who are going to be the world tomorrow, who are the kids. So any seed we sow today is what's going to bloom tomorrow to be shape our world and make a better world. So anything that you can do, regardless of how little it is, it goes towards making the world a better place. And if we go in the world with that mentality, I think we're going to have a better world.